My name is Dave Probst. I'm a deacon here at St. Patrick's Parish in Fremont. And I'd like to consider myself a good friend of Joni. Over the past about 15 years, since about 1988, I got to know her. Well, both in church and at High Square, so it's my honor and privilege to be with you this evening. We'll begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the God of hope give you fullness of peace, and may the Lord of life be always with you. My brothers and sisters, we believe that the ties of friendship and affection, which knit us as one throughout our lives, does not unravel with death. Confident that God always remembers the good we have done and forgives our sins, let us pray, asking God to gather joy to himself. Sister Joni recalls our human condition and the brevity of our lives here on earth. But for those who believe in your love, death is not the end, nor did sin destroy the bonds that you have forged in our lives. We share in the faith of your son's disciple and the hope of God's children. Bring the light of Christ's resurrection to this time of testing and pain. As we pray for Joni, and for those who loved her, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading this evening is a reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. We know that our earthly dwelling, a tent, should be, made, should be destroyed. We have a building from God, a dwelling not made with hands, eternal in heaven. So we are always courageous, although that we know that when we're at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Yet we are courageous and we'd rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please Him, whether we're at home or away. For we all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive recompense according to what he or she did in the body, whether good or evil. This is the word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm response will be, The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom should I fear? The Lord is my life and refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? The Lord is my light and my salvation. One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord and may contemplate his temple. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Hear, O Lord, the sound of my call. Have pity on me and answer me. Your presence, O Lord, I seek, I not your face from. The Lord is my light and my salvation. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage, be stout-hearted, and wait for the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. At this time, if you're capable, can you please stand for the gospel? The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus told his disciples, Gird your loins and light your lamps, and be like servants who await their master's return from a wedding, ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant on his arrival. Amen, I say to you, he will gird himself, have them recline at table, and proceed to wait on them. And should he come in the second or third watch and find them prepared in this way, blessed are those servants. Be sure of this, if the master of the house had known the hour when the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect the son of man. 
This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to our Lord Jesus Christ. You may be seated. On behalf of Father Walt Holdy, our pastor, our associates, Father Kramers and Father Tran, the St. Catherine, uh, St. Pat's women, the Catholic daughters, and all of St. Pat's parishioners, I would like to offer you our sympathy to Kathy and Dean, Stephen and Rose, Mark and Lori, Chuck and Debbie, Matthew, or Thomas, Matthew, and Lori. And also the great-grandchildren, and the grandchildren, and the remainder of the family on the loss of your mother, your grandmother, and your friend. In our first reading this evening, St. Paul tells us we must walk by faith and not by sight. This evening you're living out St. Paul's words because no one can come willingly to a wake service without walking in the faith that our Lord and Savior had a place for us. This faith is also revealed in the Gospel of Luke. Here we are told we must be prepared, for in the hour we do not expect, the Son of Man will come. Joni understood these readings as she prepared for the past 90 years for May 20th, 2024, when she would meet Jesus face to face. As a child, Joni grew up in Fremont, and was a faithful Catholic, along with her family, attending St. Patrick's Elementary and St. Patrick's High School. After high school, Joni attended St. Catherine and St. Paul, Minnesota for one year, before returning to Fremont. After her formal education, Joni knew that her vocation was to become a wife and a mother. Joni married the love of her life, her high school sweetheart, Ed Hammond, had moved to a farm south of Fremont to start their lives together. As a wife, a mother, and then a farming wife, Joni touched the lives of many. As a wife, Joni loved Ed for over 43 years, and I've been told that when someone mentioned family to Joni, her eyes would twinkle and she would smile. Joni was a good mother, raising her sons and daughter, who have carried on the Hannon traditions of their own households. Joni was a hard worker and knew what was needed to provide for her family. Joni was so faith-filled and continued drawing people closer to the Lord by conducting a Bible study in her home for over 15 years. Joni could be found most evenings watching TV or listening. She spent more time listening to the radio stations on TV and the music than actually watching the TV or reading because she loved learning and enjoying books. Joni knew that she needed to be busy, so she got involved with the church and with St. Patrick's Women and the Catholic Daughters of America who will be leading our rosary this evening. As someone were to mention and ask Joni about her pastimes, she would probably say that her favorite pastimes were praying, praying the rosary especially, or having a friendly conversation. I mentioned to Kathy when we met the other day that many times after we'd have a rosary and a communion service at Nice Square, Jody and several ladies would just sit there and talk. I'd come back two hours later and they'd still be in that same conversation. As I mentioned earlier, I always enjoyed visiting with Joni at Nice Square, especially her smile. She, her smile was contagious and she was always excited to see you no matter what time you stopped by. Often our conversations involved discussing life and what was to come. Joni was ready to meet Jesus, and as Kathy said, she's probably been ready for about the past 10 years. I learned that when I learned that Joni had passed, I immediately started praying to Joni's rosary, because that's exactly what Joni would do. Kathy told me that whenever Joni was faced with difficult times, 
she would just buck up and take care of business. Her faith never wavered. When Father Nolan and I met with Kathy and Dean, I asked her about how she would describe Joni to someone who had never met her. In a couple of words, the words that they shared, or Dean shared, were outgoing, love to visit, faith-filled, smiling, and a woman of faith. After our road trip tonight, I would like to invite any family members or friends who would like to share a few words or a story about Joni, because when we share those stories, that will always keep her alive in your memory and your hearts. And it's also a way to share just how much Joni meant to you. When I thought about Joni and her life, the following poem came to mind by David Parkins, titled, She is Gone, Remember Me. You can shed tears that she is gone, or you can smile because she lived. You can close your eyes and pray that she will come back, or you can open your eyes and see all that she has left. Your heart can be empty because you cannot see her, or it can be full of the love that you share. You can turn your back on tomorrow and live yesterday, or you can be happy for tomorrow because of yesterday. You can remember her and only that she is gone, or you can cherish her memory and let it live on. You can cry and close your mind, be empty and turn your back. Or you can do what she would want, smile, open your eyes, love, and go on. Today, many of you here and many of you who cannot be here are grateful that Tony was a part of your lives. And I'm sure that everyone here and those who cannot be here will miss Joni very much and continue to do so. I'm also sure, though, if Joni could take my place here for just a moment, she would say to all of you that I love you all so much. I already miss you terribly. And I feel badly that I didn't get a chance to say goodbye to all of you individually and to thank you for what you meant to me. She would say, but your lives must go on. So buck up, live life to the fullness. Imitate the good qualities you admired in her. However, most importantly, stand by the people you love. Be that good spouse, grandparent, brother, sister, uncle, aunt, daughter, or son. And please remember, love will always take care of the good times as well as the tough times. And please take care of each other and love one another and spread peace wherever you are. Look for the good in all people. Encourage everyone to get to heaven, because before you know it, we'll all be together again with Jesus and Mary and all the angels and saints forever and ever. May the perpetual light shine upon Joni, and may she rest in peace. At this time, I would ask the Catholic daughters to line up. Dear family and friends, are, and friends of Joni, the Catholic daughters are much more called upon to bid farewell to the mortal remains of one of their members and pay a tribute of respect to her memory, <clears throat> whom Almighty God, in His infinite wisdom and mercy, called her to an eternal reward. This occasion is altogether a sad one. It is sad indeed to realize that death has severed our earthly relationship with one of their cherished members. It's sad to realize that the ties of fraternal affection which bound her to the assembly have been severed 
and that soon her body will lie in God's own consecrated ground, where there they'll wait for the final day of judgment. In our sorrow, we are consoled by the thought that her days of illness and suffering are over, and at the end, and, and she whom we knew and loved is forever at rest from the trials of this world. Her labors are finished, and a faithful servant has been, call, had been called to meet her bridegroom. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence He shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit.
the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Eternal rest, grant on the Lord. May she rest in peace. The second glorious mystery is the ascension of Jesus into heaven. As he was about to leave this earth, Jesus said to his troubled friend, family, and disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Have faith in God and have faith in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places, and I am going to prepare a place for you. Then I shall come back and take you with me where I am, you also will may be. We pray that Joni as we turn to our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven.
be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Eternal rest grant unto Joni, O Lord. May she rest in peace. Amen. The fourth glorious mystery is the Assumption of Mary into Heaven. Just as Mary had a special love for her son, Jesus also had a very special love for his mother. Because of this special love, she was taken into heaven, body and spirit. We can picture her in heaven with Jesus and with Joni and Ed, as she tells others how glorious heaven is. From heaven, Mary cares for us as her children, especially in times of grief. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven.
sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Well, seeing that no one is really up to the task today, we'll go ahead and move on. What I would share with you, though, that tomorrow and as you gather as a family, continue to share those stories, because those stories will keep Jody's memory alive forever. We'll continue with our vigil here with our prayer of intercession. Let us turn to Christ Jesus with confidence and faith in the power of his cross and resurrection. Our response will be, Lord, have mercy. Risen Lord, pattern of our life forever, Lord, have mercy. Promise an image of what we shall be, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Son of God, who came to destroy sin and death, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Word of God, deliver us from the fear of death, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Crucify, Lord, forsaken in death and raised in glory, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, gentle shepherd who brings rest to our souls, bring peace to Joni forever. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bless those who mourn and are in pain. Bless Joni's family and friends who gather around her today. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Brothers and sisters, our true home is in heaven. Therefore, let us pray to our Heavenly Father, as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins. church. We encourage all of you to come back and share your respects. Lord Jesus, our Redeemer, you willingly gave yourself up to death 
so that we all might be saved and pass from death to life. We humbly ask you to comfort your servants in their grief and to receive Jonah into the arms of your mercy. You alone are the Holy One, you are mercy itself. By dying, you unlock the gates of life for those who believe in you. Forgive Joni her sins and grant her a place of happiness, light, and peace. And the kingdom of your glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are they who have died in the Lord. Let them rest from their labors, for their good deeds go with them. The eternal rest grant unto Joni, O Lord. Let the perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. Amen. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of Christ, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This concludes our wake service for this evening. Thank you all for being here and participating. and my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings of the Lord, the salvation of your servant Joni, we beseech your mercy that she, who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior, might find in him a merciful judge who lived the reigns ever and ever.
our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the salvation of the world, the life of the human race, the resurrection of the dead. To him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exalted praise as we acclaim.
Reverend Joni, and at the Savior's command, for by divine teaching we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Gracious, he grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, my leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
take a moment to express our gratitude for the Eucharist today, whether we physically or spiritually see the Lord. We also thank God for the gift of Jonah. called the Divine Mercy. It's important that I appear to St. Faustina and had her commission of painting reflecting that image. It's an image of Jesus pointing to his heart and from his heart flow red and white rays of light representing grace and mercy water and blood that flowed in the side of the cross. Just imagine Jesus standing before Jonah. He points to his heart for her. And as he does, these brilliant lights of red and white begin to radiate from the center of his being. He begins to hide Jonah from sight. But you know she's there, but she's hidden. Hidden in the grace and the mercy of her Savior, of her Lord, <coughs> God. Let us pray. We stand. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, moved to the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our sister Joni may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated in Matthew.
as I could see she was counting backwards nine months in her head. <laughs> Dad had passed away December 27th. She patted Lori's hand and said, Oh, honey, we find our comfort in different ways. <laughs> and Blake eventually joined us on September 24th. I was fortunate to say my final goodbyes to both mom and dad the night before they passed. In the days leading up to mom's death, I was able to tell her that she had been the best mom, that I had loved my childhood. I had loved the stability in our household day to day, and especially the way she decorated and embraced each holiday in the time leading up to it. I loved what our house turned into in Christmas time. She had decorations literally everywhere. What I've come to realize over the days since telling her that was that it wasn't because of the decorations at all. Many, by, by this time in my life, many of my siblings were out of the house. Her excitement wasn't just because of the, of the holiday I figured out. It was because she would have her family together. Whoever could make it would come. And what I felt wasn't because of the decorations. I felt a mother's love of her family, and that's what I was blessed to grow up around. As the youngest child, by a lot, I got a little different version of my parents. I got to go grocery shopping with her on her town days, which was every Thursday when she got her haircut. And Mom would always make sure we had a jar of water for the trip. And I don't know why we didn't take a thermos. I wish I had asked that last week. I never did. It was, I, I loved to take the lid off of it and share it with her. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again, when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself.
forgive whatever sins she committed through human weakness, and in your goodness, grant her everlasting peace. We ask this in Christ our Lord. Amen. Again, thank you for coming together today to remember Joni with her family. Pray for Joni with her family. This is, the, again, the most perfect prayer we can pray. Is a prayer of Christ himself. But don't let today be the last day you think of her or the last time you pray for her. Continue to pray for her. Continue to remember her and her goodness and to pray for her family. If we have the family, I'd like to invite you to lunch and that will follow our service here. We'll go out these center doors here and take a ride and go down to our parish hall, which is the Lady Hall. We'll say a blessing here now. We say, bless us, Lord, to these I give, which we are about to receive. I bow to Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace, let us take our sister to her place of rest. Please join us in singing number 257. I know that my Redeemer lives. Number 257. Mm -hmm. 